says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. This is Dr. Don Smith at the Radio Bible Hour, and you're about to hear a sermon by my father entitled, The Glory of God in the Face of Jesus Christ. The expression, the glory of God, is one that we as Christians are very familiar with. We like to say that we want our work to glorify God and not ourselves, and that truly is our heartfelt desire. In this uh, sermon, Dr. Smith points out the fact that God is jealous of His glory. He does not share His glory easily, and yet the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ was the perfect reflection of God's glory. I believe that you'll be blessed as you watch this. Uh, And now here is Dr. J. Harold Smith. Hi, dear neighbor. I want to greet each one of our precious friends in that name that's above every name, Christ Jesus our Lord. As we come out there into your homes, I trust that we'll bring a message that will bless your heart. If you have a friend or a neighbor Would you call them and tell them to tune in to this station and pick up this telecast? I believe the message I'm going to bring you in a moment will be a profitable message to all of your family. The subject of my message is the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The glory of God in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6, the Bible declares, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever stopped to think about the face of the Lord Jesus? There was never a kinder face. There was never a more gentle faith. There was never another more loving face than our wonderful Lord. But the Bible declares that the glory of God in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I stop to think about the glory of God, and I turn in my Bible over in in Psalm chapter 19 and verse 1, where the Word of God says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. I do not believe that there is in the mind of a man the knowledge of the glory of God. I do not believe that the human brain is capable of understanding the tremendous knowledge and the tremendous glory of our wonderful Lord. When I stop to think about how His glory shines from one end of the earth to the other, when I think about the Bible saying that His glory overshadowed and filled the tabernacle, when I see in the Word of God how that the Bible uh, t- tells us that it was uh, appeared in the cloud that came the wonderful cloud that guided those Israelites out of their bondage into freedom, that wonderful cloud revealed the glory of God. And when I think of this, I say, Lord, help me in my poor inability yet to speak uh, uh, concerning this wonderful message on the glory of God. What is the glory of God? Well, the glory of God is revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. What does it mean when I talk about the glory of God? It means more than my imagination or your imagination can ever understand. The glory of God is seen, as I said a moment ago, in the Lord Jesus. We see him and see that wonderful and marvelous glory in his birth. Would you have ever thought if you were going to redeem a lost world, a world that had gone into sin... When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden and sin passed upon all all men through one man, Adam, and when God came down to, to search them out in the garden and he came, the word of God says, and found them and then provided for them salvation or a covering. What was that covering? That covering was skins. And the animals that furnished that that covering, I always have believed, were lambs or sheep. And when God slew those sheep or those animals and took their skins and made a covering for Adam and Eve, he showed us a picture of that wonderful, marvelous day when the glory of God will be revealed in our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross as he died upon that tree, shedding his blood, not his skin, but his blood, in order that you 
in order that the whole world that believes upon him might be saved. And so I see the glory in that birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. At that night in Bethlehem, a little baby is born, a, a promised baby. A baby that was promised from Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 until the shepherds heard the angels say, Behold, unto you is born this day a shepherd, a savior, a lord. And you'll find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. When I stop to think about the glory of God, I can see it revealed in that little baby. That precious little baby on the bosom of that virgin mother. I see the glory of our wonderful Lord in Jesus Christ and the glory of God as our Lord stood in the temple, only 12 years old, and began to reason with all of the doctors, all of the scholars, all of the theologians of that day, the priest, and for three days and for three nights, this little 12-year-old boy answered and asked questions that uh, puzzled and that these doctors were, although they were pro pro profound in their knowledge, were not able to answer. So I see him. Not only the glory of God is that little lad stood there in that temple, but I see the glory of God when he stood yonder on the banks of the Jordan River and made the request of John the Baptist to be baptized. And when Jesus walked down into that river and he was baptized by John the Baptist, the Bible says that the Lord, the glory of the Lord was upon him. And the Spirit of God descended in the form of a dove and came upon our Lord. And a voice out of heaven said, Behold my Son, my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. A lot of people do not believe in the Trinity. They say that there is no such thing as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But my friends, at the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ, there was God speaking from heaven. There was a dove descending upon Jesus, in the, uh, the, I mean the Holy Spirit, descending upon Jesus in the form of a dove, and standing in that river was the Son of God. Now you explain that to me. All three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all three of them, right there in that one incident, in the life of our wonderful Savior. And all three making up one almighty eternal God. God the Father, no equal unless you equal him with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, no equal. No other man, no woman could ever be equal to the Lord Jesus. But the Holy Spirit is equal. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, equal in omnipotence, equal in omniscience, and equal in omnipresence. All three of them composing the one eternal Jehovah that we worship. The one whose glory fills the whole earth. There is not a spot on this earth. The heavens declare his glory. Yes, every star, the moon, the sun, every planet, everything that I know and you know as the firmament, everything that we know declares the glory of God. What a wonderful, marvelous thing it is to know that this wonderful God has such glory and that I have the privilege of serving him and that you have the privilege of serving him. Have you ever stopped to think what a wonderful joy and privilege it is to serve the eternal God who is full of glory? Have you ever stopped to think about how wonderful it is to work in the Father's house? The Bible tells us about a father who had two sons and one of these sons, the father said, I want you boys to go work in my field today. And one of them said, Lord, Father, I'll go right now. I'll go. But he didn't go. The other one said, I'm not going to work today. It's too hot. I'm not going to go down that field and work today. But he repented and went. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, which of these two sons did the will of his father? And of course, they had to say the one that repented and went and done the work his father commanded him to do. I know September the 4th, 1932, God commissioned me to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. On that day, I went to work in the vineyard, in the harvest field of my wonderful Lord. And what a wonderful opportunity it is. I had rather work for Jesus. I'd rather work for the Lord than all of the corporations in the world. I mean, if Walmart would let me be the president of their company, 
And if Ross Perot would set me over all that he owns and possesses, I would not be as happy as I am as a humble Baptist preacher talking about Jesus. And for 64 years plus, I have been able to go up and down this country and brag upon Jesus Christ, brag upon my Heavenly Father, and brag upon the Holy Spirit that abides in my body. So, when I think of the glory of God, I am completely, absolutely amazed when I think of it. God has revealed Himself where Christ, the Bible says, who is the image of God. Listen to this verse. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Do you realize that the Lord Jesus Christ is the very image of God? The Bible gives us a very beautiful picture of Jesus Christ, and that's the image, the very image of God. Have you ever heard anybody say that boy is a spit image of his father or his grandfather? Well, I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is the image, the perfect image of God the Father. And in Jesus Christ shines forth all of the glory of the Heavenly Father. And what an opportunity it is to work for him and to serve him and to give him all of my time all of my talent, how small it may be, to give it to him, to give him all of my treasure, everything that I have, my health, all of, the, of my, my ability to earn money, all of my ability, brother, to walk, all of my ability to talk, all of my ability to preach comes from him. And it all belongs to him. And what a joy it is to work in his vineyard every day, I write a letter to the Lord, just like I'd write to my wife or somebody else. And I write that letter. And in that letter, I say, Lord, I do not know where you would have me to serve you today. If it's in your vineyard, I'm ready to go there. If it's in your field, harvest field, I'm ready to go there. And Lord, I'm ready to start when the sun comes up. And I'm ready to stop when the sun goes down. And Lord, the job that nobody else wants, nobody else wants to do it, if you'll just give it to me, Lord, I'll be grateful and I'll do it with all of my heart, all of my soul, mind, body, and strength. And for all of these years, since September the 4th, 1932, you know what? I have never been laid off. I have never had the Lord to say, I'm going to give you a vacation you're going to be free for 30 days. Not one single time has a Lord ever said, there's no place for you to work today. He says every day, go and work in my field today. And I'm found that if I'll go, the harvest is ripe. So the Bible says right here that he, Jesus, is a very image of our Heavenly Father. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, And being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he hath by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the throne of the mighty uh, and the majesty on high. When the Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross, and when he shed his precious blood, every drop of it upon that cross, and when he had paid the price for my sins and your sins according to the word of God, what did he do? He sat down on the right hand of the majesty of God. I'll never forget when I was pastor of the First Baptist Church in Fort Smith, Arkansas. My son, when we went there, was about seven years old. And one Sunday night, I preached on the present position of the Lord Jesus. And I said, he, and I quoted this scripture right here. When Jesus had died on the cross, paid the price for your sins and mine, he sat down on the right hand of his majesty on high. He sat down on the right hand of God. And when we got home that night, my wife and I, my daughter, we, Don and all of us, we were having our family devotion. And we got down by the side of our bed to pray. And my little son, seven years old, said, Dad, before we pray, may I ask you a question? I said, you sure may, son. What is it? And Don said, Dad, did Jesus do all that he did with his, with his left hand? And I wondered. I said, well, son, I suppose they used both hands. He said, well, you said tonight in your sermon that when Jesus went back to heaven, he sat down on the right hand of God. 
And I just wondered if God did all that he did while he was uh, this on the earth with his left hand. So a lot of people don't understand that. But Jesus sat down on the throne of his majesty, his majesty on high. And there is our wonderful Lord in all of his glory. The angels, night and days, cry glory, glory, glory to God Almighty. And one of these days, whether you believe it or not, or whether I believe it, we're going to see the eternal glory of our wonderful Lord. The disciples, Peter, James, and John, were invited to go upon the mount, on the Mount of Transfiguration with our Lord. And they accepted that invitation. And when they got up there, lo and behold, something happened that they never anticipated. Something happened that the Lord Jesus Christ did not tell them, foretell them about. The Bible says that our Lord was transformed into his glory. And there were two other men that appeared, Moses and Elijah. And they were so wonderful and they were so much like the Lord Jesus Christ in that transformation. Until Peter said, Lord, I want to build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And the Lord Jesus Christ rebuked him. And no one is equal to our Lord in his glory. And nothing can be added to his glory. All the glory there is belongs to him. And so we find here that our Lord revealed that glory. Now who is the image of the invisible God? The Bible declares in Colossians 1.15, Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. And who is the firstborn of every creature? None other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So we find that our Lord, our wonderful Lord, reveals the glory of God. Every step that he took, every word that he spoke, every thought that he had, not one sin, not one sin did our Lord ever commit. He turned to his enemies and he said, which of you convinceth me of sin? And not a one of them were able to bring an accusation against him. He could stand with a woman at his feet that had been caught in the very act of adultery. And I've often wondered, if that woman was caught in the very act of adultery, why didn't they bring the man? Why didn't they bring him? Or maybe he belonged to the same secret lodge. Maybe I tell you he belonged to the same synagogue. Maybe he was a business partner of one of those hypocrites. Well, anyway, they didn't bring him. And they brought the woman or they might trip and, and, and trick the Lord Jesus Christ into an answer whereby they could put him to death. But our Lord said, you that are without sin, cast the first stone. Do you realize that there was just one person in all that crowd, just one person that could have thrown a stone at that woman, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. He was without sin, but he didn't pick up a stone and throw it in her direction, but he stooped down and wrote in the sand, and I've always believed, they wrote the name of the oldest old Levi and put the date out there when he had a date with this woman in the Samaritan Inn. And when that old Levi leaned over and saw that writing and realized that he was the man that Jesus was talking about, his conscience got a hold of him and he left the meeting, ran away. And when the Lord got through writing, there wasn't a man standing there bringing an accusation against a woman because they had all sinned. And our Lord stood up and he said, Woman, where art thine accusers? She said, Lord, no man accuseth me. No man. He said, Neither do I. Go thou and sin no more. So the glory of the Lord is revealed in the great compassion that he has for lost souls. In Colossians 2, 3, the Bible says here, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In whom do we find all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? Not in Solomon, not in Abraham, not in Moses, not in Elijah, not in the Apostle Paul, but in the Lord Jesus Christ. We find all of the treasures of the wisdom and knowledge of God, all of the glory. Colossians 1.19, For it, it, it pleased the Father that in, he, in, in Him should all the fullness dwell. I have preached all of my life that you must have Jesus. And to be without Him, you're lost. And to have uh, Jesus is to be saved. And to have more than Jesus is impossible. Don't look for something else if you have Jesus Christ. You're not going to be redeemed by a whole bunch of junk. 
You're going to be redeemed by the glory, by the blood of this wonderful Christ, the wonderful Son of God. And what a wonderful, wonderful salvation he provides. In Colossians 2.9, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. In Jesus Christ is God the Father. In Jesus Christ is God the, the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ is God the Word, the wonderful Word of God. It's all in our Lord Jesus Christ. What do we see in the face of the Lord Jesus? The glory of God. And the Bible says we see love. Can you find in the face of another man love like you see in the face of Jesus? Can you find in the face of another man peace like you find in the face of the Lord Jesus? Can you find joy like you can find it in any other face other than Jesus? Can you find patience any more than you can find in the face of Jesus? Can you find sorrow, I mean in grief, more than you'll find in the lovely, wonderful face of the Lord Jesus Christ. No, because it reveals all of the glory of God. Can you find anguish? Can you find a crown of thorns more revealed than in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you find the nails and the spikes of the cross? Can you see all of this, all of this expressed in the wonderful face of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because in his face is all of the glory of God, if I were able to stand here before this camera for a week, I would never be able to. I would never be able to touch the hem of the garment of his glory. Before that glory, all of the angels bow. Before that glory, all of the human race bow. Before that glory, one day the devil will have to bow. Before that wonderful, marvelous glory of God, one day before the face of the Lord Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, every sinner will cry out, from mercy. One day before him, you that are die lost will cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall upon you and hide you from the face of the glory and of the wrath of the Son of God. That don't have to be. Trust him. Accept him. Receive him. Let him come into your heart right now. Would you bow with me for a moment of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, as we bow here, I know that I am not able but may the Holy Spirit reveal to all of those that have heard us, may the Holy Spirit reveal the wonderful glory of God in the face. There is no other face like it, the face of Jesus. That wonderful face of mercy, kindness, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, mercy, and meekness, and kindness. Lord, reveal to the, those that have heard us the wonderful glory of of our wonderful God. In Jesus' name, amen. I know that I was blessed in watching this video, and I wanted to uh, share something with you in closing. My father mentioned uh, his prayer that he took the time each day of his life to write out. Uh, he would express his hopes and desires, uh, his concerns, and the things that were most on his mind. And the last day, October 10th of 2001, that he was here in the Radio Bible Hour office, he wrote out this prayer, which I have brought into the studio from his desk. And on that day, he sat down and he expressed his prayers and concerns. And there's one line in here which really touched my heart. He said, God help me to love and fear and obey and to trust you. And I think that probably should be the prayer of all of our hearts. If we do those things, love, obey, uh, trust, and love our Lord, we will see in Jesus Christ the glory of God. And I want to thank you for joining us for the broadcast today. Uh, stay in touch with us here at the Radio Bible Hour. If you would like to know more about this work, go to the web address on your screen. This is Don Smith, and again, I want to thank you for watching this video today. And may the Lord bless you in every area of your life.